Welcome, 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 everybody. This is our first class on, uh, let's see, we have Don't Be Afraid of the Devil and the End Times, <clears throat> class number one. I think I also had a little bit different uh, name, but it's basically the same thing. <clears throat> um, so I want to just start with a little introduction um, <clears throat> by way of uh, helping you to um, see generally. In fact, we'll go through an outline of what some of the stuff we're going to cover. Um, and uh, we'll talk also about some of the stuff that this isn't going to be about um, so that you can make a determination, hopefully from this first class, if you're, um, you know, so you'll know what direction it's going to take. <clears throat> All right. So I want to go over this outline. Uh, and I want to let you know, first of all, that there are really two sections of what I want to share on this. <clears throat> Excuse me. The first one is um, <clears throat> basically, uh, I think the title that I've sometimes uses so you are scared of the devil or fearful of the end times and meaning what will happen uh, in the end times and stuff like that um, and we're going to <laughs> we're going to take a, a dramatically different approach than most people i'm pretty sure um, and uh, and that's what section one will go into the outline so that you can see what that is. <clears throat> but I want to state that there's going there there's going to be a section two. But section two may end up not being uh, videotaped uh, with everybody. It, I may just videotape it separate and put it online and let people look it up. That one isn't going to just be the fun stuff. It's going to it's going to get into uh, the foundational things that I wanted it to get into. But to me, this first part is just a good idea that people become a little more healthy in their understanding of these these things that we're going to discuss. <clears throat> All right. So um, the introduction to this uh, section, a, a phrase that I use uh, kind of a lot is uh, the devil is not so tough um, and it will it will become evident when I use it in certain circumstances that you'll go hmm, maybe he's not okay um, <clears throat> so you're afraid of the end times or the tribulation the devil or anything out there that you think is coming as we get closer to what some conceive of as being the end times, we grow more concerned, scared, anxious. When you also consider the times we live in, there can be genuine reason for consternation and concern. The reason for the first portion of this study is to take away the dreadful view that most people have concerning the devil to a lesser extent, to expose his supposed superpowers for what they are. So taking away some of our concerns and everything that we have over these things. <clears throat> and then to kind of expose some of his superpowers that scare us, that may not be superpowers at all, <clears throat> and to expose them for what they are. And to believe it or not, uh, this first portion will be sort of a fun journey into this area. All right, particularly section one of this class will set you at ease because the point is not really about the end times, which it's not. The point is not about the end times, but there's information that can be shared that can certainly and will be shared that can certainly give us um, s some um, peace. Um, because if our views are wrong, then we're going to be all freaked out. Um, <clears throat> 
the, because the point is not really the end times, but ultimately being able to discern by nature what is of God and what is the opposite of him. At the beginning of our press preparations in this introduction, we point out that this study will address a contrast between God's nature and Satan's. We also want to make it clear that the purpose would not be to teach about demons. We're not going to be teaching about demons or demon possession <clears throat> or deliverance from demons. We're not going into that area at all. Uh, some could say, okay, well, we're talking about, well, don't be afraid of the devil. And we're not going to be talking about the believer's authority in Christ. <clears throat> I think to some degree, you know, whatever truths there are to that, you probably already are, are stable in that. But, <clears throat> But that's not what we're going to get into about being able to rebuke the devil and why would I worry? I've got authority over that. We're not going there at all. <clears throat> we're going to look at some things that that probably nobody else has found in the scriptures <laughs> that I that I keep seeing and seeing and seeing. <clears throat> and um, um, you know, it's not going to be about building us up bigger than the devil or building us up uh, in any sort of a way it's just going to show things in the scripture that we probably never noticed and in noticing it we will go huh the devil's not so tough or you know something else you know re relief again towards the end time or something so um, uh, section two now <clears throat> that we will get, we will probably, well, I can't guarantee we won't get to it and, and have it follow up in this class or come, come on later uh, at some time. <clears throat> but section two will deal more seriously. It will deal with the threat by the enemy in which it is this one area by the enemy that is a threat, which is a greater threat than demon possession. It threatens the foundation of who God is and perverts knowing him correctly. Uh, its contrast with God will bring you more deeply into knowing Christ crucified. So, um, and <clears throat> and in none of these things is it meant to um, uh, to get us involved with the enemy at all. Because th I'm just saying that because this is such a main thing when someone sort of tries to share along some some of these lines, or you get involved with the devil and then you, whatever. <clears throat> I don't want to be involved with the devil. I want to be involved with Jesus. And I want to know him in such a way from the scriptures that I can also understand the enemy. <clears throat> All right. So, believe it or not, we've almost gone 10 minutes. <laughs> um, so I want to go over a, a general outline of subjects now that we're going to be hitting. And this is, this is my outline, so it'll pretty much... Um, um, pretty much be the order in which I teach this. Okay, so <clears throat> I have Roman numeral one, wrong perceptions about the devil. And this is just a fact. People have extremely wrong perceptions about the devil. Now, I do want to say that um, the other night when I, I guess it was, I don't remember what night it was, but the other night when I said something, maybe it was Sunday night, uh, about this class, uh, and uh, weren't the first people that I called upon to talk to was Dennis and Jan, and <laughs> you're on here, and they were, they were great, um, asked, well, we're going to do all the big charts about the, you know, in times and all that. No, not going there. We're not going to be doing that. <clears throat> but 
but he made a very simple statement uh, uh, that had at least two main elements in it that are exactly the line that I will eventually go down. Um, and um, and so I just want to say, Dennis, you you really hit the nail on the head. Now I think some of the subject matter is going to be enjoyable to you also, but that was really good what you said. <clears throat> All right, so Roman number one, wrong perceptions about the devil. And I just think in general, Christians have a wrong perception of the devil. They just do. And I, I will get into uh, and explain where the wrong perceptions came from somewhat, you know, because I don't know every one of it, but I, I know some areas where the wrong perceptions came from that drew us into another mindset than, shall I say, reality. <clears throat> Roman numeral two, general facts about the devil from the beginning. <clears throat> now, these, this area will probably be familiar to most of you, but I want to make sure that it's covered for those that it's not. <clears throat> and of course, we're talking about Ezekiel 28 and Luke 14. So I want to go there and just uh, give some general facts about the devil from the beginning so that we can have some of those, that foundation <clears throat> laid. And I don't think, you know, like I said, most of this, I don't think it's going to take super long. Um, Roman numeral three, Lucifer is not on uh, equal par with God. Now, that sounds like something everybody knows, but we, we need to really understand that. We need to really understand that, okay? Roman numeral four, <clears throat> and it's called, uh, uh, and so the terrible war begins. That's my title for this section. And this section gets into a lot of scripture. Um, so I, I will just put it like this. I, A under Roman numeral four, Roman numeral four being, and so the terrible war begins. A is discovering that the devil is not so scary or tough. The terrible wars. Hmm. B, early battles with the forces of darkness. C, the vicious war between Satan and Jesus. Now, some of these I'm saying were tongue in cheek, okay? Tongue in cheek. Um, and then uh, D under that is head-to-head -head confrontations in the war, head-to-head -head confrontations in the war, and it's in a bunch of these that we're going to go, wow, <laughs> this, is, this is unbelievable. <clears throat> Rome, or E under Roman numeral four, head-to-head -head war from the book of Revelation, which really ought to be a shocker to so many of us, especially when it comes to the fear of the end times and all of that stuff. Uh, um, and and I addressed I addressed the real purpose that I believe uh, the Book of Revelation was written. Uh, and y'all, many of you were in that class, um, and it's pretty plain what I believe. And I, you know, I don't know everything, but I think the scriptures bear that uh, view out. Um, whereas the other is just a bunch of weird um, symbolism that people can't understand. Well, that is it. But we're not going to deal with that so much. I'm, I'm going to trust that since you've been already through that Revelation class, that um, I'm not going to have to explain that, I can just go ahead and take my time and deal with this head-to-head -head war 
from the book of Revelation so that you can see, you know. All right. <clears throat> um, there's a, I, I will list I will list the wars. <clears throat> also, there will be a section having uh, the big declaration that scares everybody. The, there's a there's a particular big declaration in the Bible that just scares everybody and scares them about the end time too, if it's true in general. And it and we're going to deal with that head on. <clears throat> um, then we'll have a summary of the wars between God and the devil. And again, this isn't, this isn't, uh, this is, this is going to be fun. I'm telling you, this isn't going to be some big cerebral thing of trying, you know, all this or, or, you know, let's examine all the wars. The examination that we do of the wars, I promise you, is going to be a joy for you. It's not going to go anything like what you possibly could think. <clears throat> um, and uh, then um, we will we will deal with the book of Revelation in general um, with uh, certain subjects and things that go through that because that deals a lot with the end time and of course the devil. But I mean, it deals with with the end times and. And again, if certain things aren't explained, then there's just going to be a, you know, we're not going to know. And especially when you have input from movies and you have input from teachers with a, a million charts and you have input from all of this, you, it can just be overwhelming. Like, oh, my God, you know, and I just want to look at the scriptures real. I, I don't, you know, I don't want to change anything. I just want to read it just like it is and go. What do you think of that? <laughs> and then the last one, I guess there were actually three things that Dennis uh, said, <clears throat> that you said, my brother, that I appreciated, uh, which is also a, a big thing, and that is Satan as a tool. And um, we sort of know that. I think all of us have heard that. I think that, you know, uh, I think it's possible to have heard that, assume that we know that, and not have really seen it over and over in the scripture, especially in places that we didn't think that he was a tool, but he was. So that's the outline. We did 15 minutes. Uh, I'm not going to get into it because um, it's too much fun to have to start and then stop. I want to I want to just be able to cover chunks. And that's why the timing, that's why the timing, uh, whether it's 15 minutes or 20 minutes or sometimes 30 minutes, <clears throat> I can't nail it down because as you saw in the outline, it's really valuable if I can cover a lot of those things uh, in equal chunks of time, regardless you know, and I, I'm not going to go an hour or 45 minutes on any of this. So, um, let's see. All right. So I think that's it. We'll pray. Father, I just ask that <clears throat> this simple class be more than a simple class. That from your word, your word, your word, things might stand up out of the scriptures. Verses or phrases that show something so opposite of what we've been taught or thought of that has struck fear in us or has caused us to worry or want or worry what's going to happen. And Lord, you have 
just so graciously and miraculously pull these things out so that we could go together through them and and see that they're so simple that they're they're liberating there's nothing to argue over what they say and so father i thank you and I pray indeed there will be times when people just break out into laughter. <laughs> I did. I pray that it will be a wonderful experience. And that, Father, you will be glorified in us uh, being together to hear from you and to love you back and for you to be your son to be glorified in the midst of us we do love you and we do love one another and we do need one another so let your spirit begin now let your spirit begin now and let him be there to fall upon us each each time we meet on thursday nights and Father, I thank you. I thank you for this specific time that you're going to give us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, fasten your seatbelts. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next time.